Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Today's video is a follow-up to that heavily requested second generation Ryzen IPC comparison that we made a few weeks ago when I compared the Ryzen 5 2600X to the Core i7-8700K. Now these are six core 12 threaded CPUs and for that test they were locked at four gigahertz. So it's more of a for science type test than that it is your typical uh, sort of buying advice. And the idea there is to remove the core and memory clock speeds from the equation to see how the different architectures stack up. Before we get to that though, this video has been sponsored by Wix, the website building service that combines advanced technology with beautiful designs to create your perfect website. There are tons of professional solutions available through Wix's website building tools, including Wix Code, which is an impressive set of developer tools that allow you to create advanced web applications with less hassle. With Wix Code, you can create content-rich websites, add custom forms, build databases, and more, all through Wix's class-leading website design interface. You can even take things to the next level with Wix Code APIs and JavaScript to build advanced functionality, which integrates seamlessly with Wix's stunning website templates and designs. Seriously, I've played around with Wix's website designer, and in just a few minutes, a novice designer like me was able to create a stunning professional website. That's pretty impressive. If you're interested in building a website with Wix, head to wix.com forward slash go forward slash Harbour Unboxed to get started. Okay, so for those of you unaware, IPC stands for Instructions Per Cycle, and it is a good indicator of a CPU's performance. The Coffee Lake CPUs offer high IPC coupled with high operating frequency, and that really is the best combination for maximum performance. Although AMD is clearly trailing when it comes to frequency, we saw in the last video that they have really closed up on Intel when it comes to IPC performance. However, not all Intel CPUs are created equally, and their high-end desktop parts using the Skylake X architecture are very different to the Coffee Lake Core i7 processor that was featured in the previous video. That being the case, many of you have asked me to go back and recreate the IPC comparison, but this time with a Skylake X processor included. So that's what I've done. Once again, to see how much headway AMD's made here, we're going to neutralize as many variables as we can, while also keeping things as realistic as possible. The first and most obvious step is to remove the core frequency from the equation, and to do so, we've locked all CPU cores at four gigahertz. Any type of boost technology has also been disabled. The cores cannot go past four gigahertz, and all cores are locked at four gigahertz. The second generation Ryzen CPUs have been tested on the ASRock X470 Tai Chi Ultimate and the Coffee Lake CPUs on the ASRock Z370 Tai Chi. Both configurations use the same G-Skill Flare X DDR4-3200 memory using the Extreme Memory Profile and the same MSI GTX 1080 Ti Gaming X Trio was used for all test systems. And finally, for those of you wondering, no, I haven't fine-tuned the Ryzen sub-memory timings for this test. I feel like that would have been a bit misleading. Perhaps that's something we can do in another video. Also, please note, and I can't stress this enough, this is purely for a science-type benchmark and is in no way buying advice. The Intel CPUs do have a clock speed advantage. There's no getting away from that. And for real world performance, please refer to our recent Ryzen 5 2600, 2600X, and 2700X reviews. For this test, I've included results for the Intel Core i7, 8700K, 7820X, and 7800X, along with the Ryzen 7 2700X, 2600X, 1800X, and 1600X. Now, the 1600X, 2600X, 7800X, and 8700K all have the same CPU resources, so they're six core with 12 threads. The 1800X, 2700X, and 7800X, that's a lot of Xs, all have an advantage being that they are eight core, 16 thread CPUs, so they will be compared to one another. Having said all that, let's jump into the results. First up, we have sustained memory bandwidth performance, and here we see that despite using the same G-Skill Flare X DDR4-3200 memory, the performance does vary quite a bit from one platform to another. Although the Core i7-8700K and Ryzen processors feature dual-channel memory controllers, the Ryzen CPUs do enjoy almost a 20% boost in memory bandwidth. However, the Skylake X Core i7-7800X and 7820X take advantage of quad-channel memory, and as a result, have at least 33% more bandwidth to play with when compared to the Ryzen CPUs. Moving on to the Cinebench R15 results, and here we see that despite offering a greater single-thread score, the Core i7-7820X was actually slower than even the 1800X for the multi-threaded result, and this points to AMD's implementation of SMT as being more efficient than the HT technology used by Intel. In this clock-for-clock -clock comparison, the 2700X again outscored the 7820X by a 6% margin. 
It was a similar story when looking at the 6-core CPUs. Here the 7800X matched the single-thread performance of the 8700K, but loses out for the multi-threaded test. Then while it beat the Ryzen CPUs by a sizable margin for the single-thread test, it was 6% slower than the 2600X for the multi-threaded test. Next up we have the PC Mark video editing results, and here the 8-core CPUs all delivered similar results when matched clock for clock. The 7820X did just manage to edge out the 2700X, but we're really talking about margin of error stuff here. The same is also true for the 6-core CPU comparison, though here the 1600X does lag a bit behind. Interestingly, the Ryzen CPUs do extremely well in the PC Mark 10 gaming physics test, it appears as though SMT technology is being very well utilised here. The 2700X was 6% faster than the 7820X, while the 2600X was 9% faster than the 7800X. 7-Zip is an interesting program to benchmark IPC performance with, as the use of simultaneous multi-threading behaves differently on the Intel and AMD CPUs. Intel's hyper-threading appears to be just as efficient for compression work as it is decompression, and this gives them an advantage for the compression test. AMD's SMT technology, on the other hand, is amazing at decompression, but quite poor at compression. That said, though, since most people extract archives far more often than create them, this is a decent performance trade-off. However, as I alluded to earlier, what it does do is make comparing IPC performance very difficult. I really wish I had taken the time to run this test again with simultaneous multi-threading disabled on both the AMD and Intel CPUs. I think those results would have been quite interesting. Here we see when testing with Excel that the 8-core Ryzen CPUs are able to beat the 7820X and complete the workload 6% faster. Meanwhile, the 2600X was 5% faster than the 7800X, and even the old 1600X was still a fraction quicker. We've seen in the past that our handbrake workload prefers Intel CPUs, and as a result, the Skylake X CPUs were able to beat the second-gen Ryzen processors by a convincing margin in this test. The 7820X, for example, was 11% faster than the 2700X, and the same margin was seen when comparing the 7800X and 2600X. Then moving on, we have the Corona benchmark, and we see much more competitive results here. Here, the 2700X and 7820X delivered the same performance, while the 2600X was a smidgen quicker than the 7800X. Performance was again competitive in Blender, though this time the Intel CPUs did have a slight performance advantage. We're talking just 5% or less here, so again, only a very slight advantage when matched clock for clock at 4 GHz. Moving on to the V-Ray benchmark, and here we see again very competitive results. Basically identical performance when comparing the Skylake X and second gen Ryzen processors. Alright, so let's move on to some gaming benchmarks, and here I expect to see some more mixed results, given what we've seen in the past when testing Skylake X. It has to be said though that Intel does get off to a flying start with Ashes of the Singularity, delivering strong performance with both their 6 and 8 core models, as both were 10% faster than the competing second generation Ryzen parts. Moving on though, we find some interesting results with Assassin's Creed Origins using the ultra quality preset. Although the 2700X edged ahead of the 7820X, the 2600X was a good bit slower than the 7800X. Introducing the higher quality settings does reduce the performance deficit between the 6 core models, and now we're seeing very similar frame time performance. Moving on to Battlefield 1, and here we have some very interesting results. For whatever reason, the second gen Ryzen processors and even the first generation models had no trouble beating the Skylake X competition. The 2700X was 8% faster than the 7820X for the average frame rate and 12% for the frame time result. So a seriously strong showing for AMD in this title. Those margins grew further once we reduced the GPU bottleneck with the medium quality settings, and here the 2700X was 11% faster than the 7820X for the average frame rate, and 13% faster for the 1% low result. Finally, I compared these CPUs clock for clock in Far Cry 5, and again, another big win for AMD here. Despite using the ultra quality preset at 1080p, the 2700X was up to 11% faster than the 7820X, and the 2600X was up to 10% faster than the 7800X. Even the first gen parts were able to match the Skylake X CPUs when matched clock for clock at full gigahertz. Okay, so in the previous IPC comparison, which focused on the Coffee Lake and second gen Ryzen processors, I noted a few reasons for why Intel's mainstream CPU series enjoys big gains in most of the gaming titles. In short, I believe this is down to the core-to-core -core latency, and Intel's ring bus is just extremely efficient. 
However, the mesh interconnect used by the Skylake X and modern Intel Xeon server processors isn't nearly as impressive, at least with these lower core count CPUs. When it came to gaming performance, we saw very mixed results, though overall AMD came out on top for the small sample of games tested. Of course, this is a 4 GHz clock for clock comparison, and the average 7800X should be good for 4.6 GHz, while the Ryzen 5 2600X is more limited, hitting around 4.2 to 4.3 GHz on all cores. That's up to a 10% frequency advantage for the Skylake X CPU under normal conditions. So that being the case, it would be very interesting to compare these two CPUs in a wide range of games. You know, say more than 30 games. Anyway, getting back to IPC performance, it's quite clear that the second gen Ryzen CPUs are at a disadvantage when compared to the Skylake X CPUs, even when it comes to games. Then of course we have application performance, which was mighty competitive. Here it was rare for a workload to heavily favor a particular CPU architecture, and overall performance was very much the same. This then suggests that AMD's upcoming second generation Ryzen Threadripper CPUs are going to give Intel a seriously hard time at the high end, if they weren't already. Oh, it's so good to have some real competition back in the CPU space. And that is going to do it for this one. If you did enjoy the video, be sure to hit the like button. Subscribe for more content. If you appreciate the work we do here at Hardware Unboxed, then consider supporting us on Patreon. The link for our Patreon account is in the video description, and you will gain access to our Discord chat where you can ask Tim and I whatever you want directly, and we'll answer that. And you can also watch our monthly live stream and ask whatever questions you want there as well. So... If you sign up to our Patreon, basically you can just do a lot of question asking. Anyway, that's going to do it for this one. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time.